The show opens up as a woman named Turid Sire enters the beautiful Norwegian town of Eta with her two sons, Mange and Lawrence. On the way, Mange helps an old man with an eye patch navigate across the street. But as they reach the sidewalk, a strange woman brushes her fingers on the young boy's forehead, and his eyes glow up like thunderbolts. As Mange gets back in the car, he randomly comments that it is going to rain and just like that, it begins to rain. The family settles down in their new home, and the two boys reach the school the following day. After a brief introduction where we find out that our hero is dyslexic, the history teacher assigns them their desk mates. Mange gets partnered up with Isold, a blue-haired girl who is vocal about environmental issues. During the lunch break, Isold introduces Mange to Fjor and Saxa Judal who are popular in the school for their good looks. Their mother, Ran Judal, is the principal of the school and also their English teacher. After school, Isold reveals that someone has vandalized her bicycle as a warning but doesn't expand on it. Surprisingly, Mange manages to fix her bicycle with sheer physical strength. One evening while out on the town, Turid sees Vidar, Ran's husband, and the two chat like old friends. He seems warm and genuine, but at home, he's cold and monstrous with his kids. He looks up an old article from a local newspaper and finds the photo of a young mange with his brother and mother mourning the death of his father. Suspecting something, he asks his children, Saxa and Fjord, to keep an eye on the new boy. In the meantime, Mange takes a look at Isold's YouTube channel, where she chronicles the strange death of Trout in Edda's Lakes. This inspires him to finish his essay on democracy. The two start to get even closer as Isold invites Mange to her house for dinner. There he meets their history teacher who happens to be Isold's dad. His new friend is convinced her mom died because of shady environmental changes, which are also killing Edda's fish. The next day, the two friends start their hike up the mountain, but soon come across a warning sign near a bridge. Isold explains that the Judal family owns the mountain, and puts these warnings to deter visitors. They hop right over it but a message saying that something is wrong with his mom sends Magni running back home. In the meantime, Vidar is also present in the mountain, in a more monstrous way. He strips his clothes and stalks a group of deer. As we hear Old Norse chants in the background, his eyes glow yellow. He pounces on a deer, snapping his neck and ripping his heart out. In an even weirder twist, he takes a big bite of the heart and lets a loud roar ring across the mountains. Coincidentally, Isold is also roaming inside a cave in the mountains nearby when she hears the roar. A little more inside the cave, she finds a door with a warning sign attributed to Jutal Industries. While this is happening, Mange has managed to reach his home surprisingly fast, but he finds out that the message was a prank from his mischievous brother, and goes outside. At a distance, he can see Isold paragliding off the mountain and flying straight into the electrical wires. By the time he catches up to her, she is covered in blood and dead. As loud thunder roars above, Vidar arrives on the spot but can't resuscitate her back to life. That night, out in the pouring rain, Magni grabs his mother's hammer and tosses it high and far into the thundering skies. As he screams in anger, the power lines go out drowning the town in darkness. Magni is devastated by the loss of his only friend in Etta but his brother, Loritz doesn't seem to be bothered much. At school, Principal Rand's condolence message is interrupted by Isold's dad and their history teacher, Eric. He turns up to work and says that the annual school dance program should go ahead, as his daughter would have wanted that. Later, the town police chief shows up and explains to the students that Isold's tandem wing was struck by lightning causing her to lose her mobile phone, which is yet to be found. In the aftermath, she flew straight at the electric lines causing her death. However, an unsatisfied Magni corners her with questions regarding the way his friend died. Unbeknownst to him, Ran is closely listening to their conversation. Unfortunately, Magna's concerns are brushed aside and the case is closed. Later that night, he discovers Isold's YouTube video, where she confronts Vidar, the CEO of Jutal Industries, regarding the pollution caused by his factory. In the next scene, we learn that the hammer thrown by Magni traveled 1.5 kilometers away and accidentally smashed through the windscreen of Vidar's Volvo. In turn, the businessman asks his accountant, Turid, to sort out the insurance claiming it was vandalized by some jerk. To her surprise, Turid recognizes her hammer from the photos, and later that night accuses her elder son of vandalizing the car. Confused by his mother's accusations, Magni decides to conduct a scientific experiment. He tosses a sledgehammer and gauges the distance. To his surprise, he easily manages to throw the hammer 541 meters away. Meanwhile, in the Jutal mansion, Vidar examines the hammer and confesses to Ran that he murdered Isold because she ventured too deep into the incrementing tunnel. She assures him saying that the case is already closed but expresses concerns about Isold's phone with probable evidence of their secrets. Back at school Magni and Gry continue working together on their assignment. However, during a study session, 
He reveals that he can throw a hammer incredibly far but she thinks he is simply making up stories and gets weirded out by the conversation. Before leaving, she invites him to the school's annual dance party, but he decides against it. Instead, he goes to Isold's memorial where coincidentally, Vidar is searching for the missing phone. In the next scene, Loritz arrives at the party all dressed up like an 80 seconds rock star, which impresses Saxa. Midway through a speech honoring Isold, Magni shows up and interrupts the somber mood. The two brothers talk to each other while looking longingly at their respective crushes. During the party, Efjor speaks to Loritz about his elder brother, and attempts to learn more about Magni before interrupting his attempts to woo Gry, asking her for a dance instead. She accepts and as a romantic song starts, Magni finds himself unable to watch the two dance and runs away. Outside, he stumbles upon his classmate Oscar who happens to be the police chief's son, and tries to convince him not to drink tap water. Labeling this as paranoia, Oscar mocks his worldviews before finally apologizing. He then reveals that his mother told him about how the strong winds caused Isolde to crash against the mountain. Hearing this, Magni realizes the police have completely changed the story of her death. Immediately, he heads to Isolde's home and talks to Eric about what he's discovered. But Isolde's father is having none of it, telling him to take it easy. Angry and frustrated, Magni heads out and moves Eric's car with his bare hands. Upon seeing this, Eric invites him back inside where he shows more of the evil corporation Vidar is in charge of and how it's destroying the world with pollution. Meanwhile, Oscar, Fjor and Loritz head out together and ridicule the memorial left for Isold at the scene of her death. Fjor urinates all over the tribute while Oscar snaps a video of it, and immediately uploads it to Instagram. Angered, Fjord punches him hard and demands it be quickly deleted. Over at Judal Mansion, Vidar learns of the incident thanks to a screenshot taken by his wife. When his son reaches home, Vidar talks to him about the old times and how the humans used to worship them. Unfortunately, the unwanted stunt earlier causes Vidar to beat his son without mercy. Unbeknownst to them, Gry happens to be upstairs on a sleepover with Saxa, and sees the entire incident play out. Later at Isold's funeral, Fjor looks completely unharmed, without a single scratch on his face despite the heavy beating. After the funeral, the Sire family return home to find their house completely trashed as if someone had ransacked the place. On the following morning, the two brothers corner the drug addict who lives nearby and ask him about the break-in. As Magni holds him up by the scruff of the neck, the addict mentions that he saw a man in a nice car and a huge dog last night in front of their home. Later that afternoon, Magni goes to the school's psychologist and confesses his suspicions. Vidar ransacked their home in order to destroy any evidence of his wrongdoing. Unfortunately, Ran uses her position as the principal and manages to get this information out of the school's psychologist. She later informs Vidar about this incident, and the two realize that the new boy in town is slowly becoming a threat towards their secret. In the next scene, we see Magni speaking to the police chief about the varying expiations of Isolde's death. Instead, she counters by asking how he managed to get back to town from the mountain so quickly on that day. She is right, our hero had never thought how he managed to cross the mountain in under 30 minutes, while it takes a normal human more than double that time. So, he decides to test his running speed at the school facility. He manages to run a 100 meter distance in 6.98 seconds, more than 2 seconds faster than the Olympic record. Meanwhile, Loritz tags along with his teenage friends and jokingly implies that there is a hint of a double date going on here. When confronted by both the girls, he makes it clear that he is flirting with Fjor and not his sister. Suddenly their car strikes a small bird which drops on the street, injured. The Judal siblings stop the car and rush towards the bird leaving their friends in the car. In a weird twist, Saxa completely eats the bird, while they aren't looking. In the meantime, Magni gets into an accident as a huge snowplow hits him in the middle of the road and runs over him. Vidar watches this incident from afar and presumes the boy is now dead. Back in the mansion, the Judal family raises a celebratory toast to his death and Vidar finally confesses that he killed Isolde, but he insists her death was a necessity, reminding that she had ventured too far into their secret tunnel. We learn that the tunnel was built in 1967 and was hidden by glaciers for decades. With the ice melting away, their secret is at risk of being exposed to the world. On the other hand, despite being hit, Magni actually seems to be fine and hasn't broken a single bone in his body, taking the hospital staff by surprise. As he returns home that evening, he records his thoughts on his phone again and wonders if he's invincible. When this news reaches the Jutal mansion, Vidar speaks to Ran and questions just who or what Magni is. His wife suggests that the only way to find out is by inviting him over to their house along with his brother Loritz for dinner. Clueless, the two brothers head to the posh mansion the next night. During dinner, the Judal couple watches intently as Magni completely polishes off a whole plate of red meat. 
The dinner extends into a dance party, but Magni stays away drinking vodka with Saxa. When Vidar sees that he remains unaffected even after multiple shots of vodka, he gives the young boy some meat from ancient times. Drinking out of a horn, Magni gulps down the whole thing, and this causes him to get intoxicated finally. As a result, he busts out some pretty ridiculous dance moves before slamming an axe into the wall and splitting the target log clean into two pieces. As he drops to his knees, he tells Ran he's super strong. Intending to find out more, Ran arm wrestles with the drunk boy, trying hard to prove him wrong. Both Ran and Magni are surprised as they battle to a stalemate. However, when he looks up and sees an ancient, shriveled demon in Ran's place, he freaks out and she slams his arm on the table, shattering it. In the final scene, Magni excuses himself to gather his composure in the bathroom. As he washes his face and looks up, he sees himself as an older man with a beard, an image of Thor, the god of lightning and nature in Norse mythology. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave 1000 likes or 100 comments if you'd like us to continue part 2. Thank you.